In mathematical logic, the de Bruijn index is a notation invented by the Dutch mathematician Nicolaas Govert de Bruijn for representing terms in the lambda calculus with the purpose of eliminating the names of the variable from the notation. Terms written using these indices are invariant with respect to alpha conversion, so the check for alpha equivalence is the same as that for syntactic equality. Each de Bruijn index is a natural number that represents an occurrence of a variable in a lambda term, and denotes the number of binders that are in scope between that occurrence and its corresponding binder. The following are some examples. The term lambda x. Lambda y, x, sometimes called the k combinator, is written as lambda lambda 2 with de Bruijn indices. The binder for the occurrence x is the second lambda in scope. The term lambda x, lambda y, lambda z, x z, with de Bruijn indices, is lambda 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 3 1. The term lambda z, is lambda. See the following illustration, where the binders are colored and the references are shown with arrows. The Bruijn indices are commonly used in higher-order reasoning systems such as automated theorem provers and logic programming systems. Formal definition. Formally, lambda terms written using the Bruijn indices have the following syntax. M n equals n m n lambda m where n natural numbers greater than zero are the variables. A variable n is bound if it is in the scope of at least n binders, otherwise it is free. The binding site for a variable n is the nth binder it is in the scope of starting from the innermost binder. The most primitive operation on lambda terms is substitution, replacing free variables in a term with other terms. In the beta reduction n, for example, we must find the variables n1, n2, nk and m that are bound by the lambda in lambda m. Decrement the free variables of m to match the removal of the outer lambda binder and replace n1, n2, nk with n, suitably incrementing the free variables occurring in n each time to match the number of lambda binders under which the corresponding variable occurs when n substitutes for one of the ni. To illustrate, consider the application, which might correspond to the following term written in the usual notation. After step 1, we obtain the term lambda 4, where the variables that are destined for substitution are replaced with boxes. Step 2 decrements the free variables, giving lambda 3. Finally, in step 3, we replace the boxes with the argument, namely lambda 5 1. The first box is under a 1 binder, so we replace it with lambda 6 1. The second is under 2 binders, so we replace it with lambda 7 1. The final result is lambda 3. Formally, a substitution is an unbounded list of term replacements for the free variables, written m1, m2, where me is the replacement for the ith free variable. The increasing operation in step 3 is sometimes called shift and written k where k is a natural number indicating the amount to increase the variables. For example, 0 is the identity substitution, leaving a term unchanged. The application of a substitution s to a term m is written m s. The composition of two substitutions s1 and s2 is written s y s2 and defined by m s1 s2 equals s2. The rules for application are as follows. The steps outlined for the beta reduction above are thus more concisely expressed as n beta m n 1.2.3 alternatives to de Bruijn indices. When using the standard named representation of lambda terms, where variables are treated as labels or strings, one must explicitly handle alpha conversion when defining any operation on the terms. The standard variable convention of Barendag is one such approach where alpha conversion is applied as needed to ensure that bound variables are distinct from free variables, and all binders bind variables not already in scope. In practice this is cumbersome, inefficient, and often error-prone. It has therefore led to the search for different representations of such terms. 
On the other hand, the named representation of lambda terms is more pervasive and can be more immediately understandable by others because the variables can be given descriptive names. Thus, even if a system uses De Bruijn indices internally, it will present a user interface with names. De Bruijn indices are not the only representation of lambda terms that obviates the problem of alpha conversion. Among named representations, the nominal approaches of Pitts and Gabay is one approach, where the representation of a lambda term is treated as an equivalence class of all terms rewritable to it using variable permutations. This approach is taken by the nominal data type package of Isabel Hall. Another common alternative is an appeal to higher order representations where the lambda binder is treated as a true function. In such representations, the issues of alpha equivalence, substitution, etc., are identified with the same operations in a meta logic. When reasoning about the meta theoretic properties of a deductive system in a proof assistant, it is sometimes desirable to limit oneself to first-order representations and to have the ability to name assumptions. The locally nameless approach uses a mixed representation of variables, the Bruijn indices for bound variables and names for free variables, that is, able to benefit from the alpha-canonical form of de Bruijn indexed terms when appropriate.